Hey, this is Daniel from Matarama. Today I want to talk a little bit about time-lapse photography. So there's a couple of kind of different ways you can do time-lapse, one of which is you can shoot like with a video camera. So essentially in that kind of a time-lapse you set up your video camera and you record the entire event, let's say it's a fashion show that's two hours long, and at the end when you put it into your editing software you basically speed it up. There's certain advantages to that, it has like a, a certain flow to it and you can really tweak it uh, here and there, but the way that I generally like to do time lapses is to use a stills camera. By using a stills camera, I actually am taking individual photos at a certain interval, which gives me the ability to, let's say, shoot raw, which means I can adjust them later in post if I need to make adjustments if things change or whatever. It also gives me the ability to shoot much larger files, take those files and make, let's say, a 4K time lapse, or do punch-ins and do all kinds of other things. It's not super complicated, you have to do a little bit of math, and we'll go through that in a minute, but First, I just want to talk about uh, some of these modern cameras. This particular one, this uh, D4S, when, in a lot of cameras, have two different ways of doing time lapse. This has a way where I program in my uh, interval and my event time, and then it shoots all those frames throughout the exposure that I asked for, and then at the end of it, it actually makes a movie file, which is super convenient if you have to turn it in right away, you're a journalist, it just, you don't need any software, it just does it for you. But again, what I often like to do is the other version, which here they call uh, interval photography, which is it actually just shoots a bunch of individual pictures. Just make sure you have a really big memory card if you're shooting raw, because you may be shooting thousands of photos in order to, to get, let's say, a, a 24 hour time lapse of something. Also, you may want to look into cameras that have the ability to uh, be plugged in to AC power, because that could be important if you're going to do really long time lapses, let's say for a construction company or something. So let me just show you how to set up on this camera. Again, every camera is a little bit different, but just to give you an idea, we'll show you on this one. So on the Nikon here, if I just hit the menu here, I've already got it scrolled up to my time-lapse photography. I go here, I select it, and now I'm gonna choose my interval. So basically I'm choosing here how often to fire the camera. Let's say that I wanna shoot the camera every 15 seconds. So I'll put my 15 seconds in, that means every time uh, the 15 seconds go by, the camera will fire one time. I hit it here, and I go down to my shooting time, and then I'm gonna dial in the, the length of my time lapse. So let's say I'm doing a party and it's one hour. I generally give myself a little bit more time, so if it's an hour long party, I might give myself like an hour and 15 minutes just to make sure I have all the extra uh, things that might go on, assuming I can't leave, so let's just set it for an hour and 15. Right, okay. And then this right here is a speech feature for this particular camera. It's allowing it to make the exposure uh, smoothed out in the end that way if the, the exposure fluctuates. But again, that's only a special feature that you may not use. And then you hit start. And it makes the first photo. And it's just gonna continue to shoot. The top of the camera is flashing interval until uh, the one hour and 15 minutes goes by. And then in the end, uh, you get a video. Okay, so that's how you set it up on the D4S. Again, your individual camera might be slightly different or you might use something like a pocket wizard or a remote to set it up, but they're all basically the same thing. The math is pretty simple once you get it down and to show you how to do that math, we have Sharina. Hey guys. So I'm gonna show you how easy the math is to set up time-lapse. The first thing you need to do is figure out how long you want your video to be. So let's say I want my video to be 10 seconds. The second thing is you should know how long your event is going to be. So this event is going to be one hour. Now, typically people shoot at 24 frames per second. So all you have to do is multiply 24 times 10, which gives us 240 frames in total. It's much easier to do this math with seconds. So one hour is 60 minutes which is 3,600 seconds. And if you wanna figure out the intervals between shots, all you have to do is divide this number, 240, into 3,600 seconds. That gives me hmm, 15 seconds. In conclusion, you'll need to set your intervals at 15 seconds to get a 10 second video from a one hour event, all right? Thank you for watching and please subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you again on Onset.